Hey friends, welcome to Soja Videos. My name is Joan and today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to make your very own DIY keychains. For this DIY, we'll be using shrinky dings or shrink plastic to make our charms. They're basically flexible plastic sheets that you can draw on and cut out into shapes and then bake them and they'll shrink and turn into your very own charms. Honestly, you get pretty creative with what exactly you make and it's honestly easier than I think most people realize. Now, as you can see here, these are just some of the examples of the keychains I make in these videos. Maybe you'll recognize them from certain shows, streamers, fandoms, all that kind of thing. But you can basically make anything that you want. Feel free to let me know what are some of the keychains that you guys end up making. And other than that, I think it's ready to get on with the video. So what you'll need is some shrink plastic paper, some pencil crayons, a permanent marker or oil-based marker, keychains, pliers, and lastly, scissors. I got my plastic shrink wrap paper, which was actually pretty cheap and from the local Japanese dollar store, and on the back there were some instructions as well. And as you may notice, there's a rough side and a glossy side to the plastic. So what we're gonna do is draw on the rough side of the plastic to start our first design. For the shrink paper that I got, it said that the plastic would shrink down five times the size that it was originally. So if you're kind of pickier about what kind of size keychain you'd like, you can definitely measure it out and try to guess how much it will shrink to. But to start off, I'm just gonna basically do a simple flower keychain. And since I'm terrified of commitment, I first traced it out with pencil and then went in afterwards with my marker. So I finished lining the flower and the idea behind the design is that I kind of want to keep it clear so I'm going to leave it at that and get to cutting. The plastic isn't too too hard to cut into but just make sure that you're being careful and going slow so you don't actually cut into your drawing. And since we're making this into a keychain, we're gonna need a place to put the actual chain. So I just used a hole puncher, put the plastic in, and there you go. Also, once you're done cutting it out and you notice the edges are still kind of not as clean as you want them to be, you can always go over with more marker afterwards. And for my next charm, I actually wanted to make a Heartstopper leaf inspired by the show and the web comics. And yes, I know I've already done some Heartstopper stuff on the channel, but I'm still really in love with the show and wanted to make a keychain. So same thing with the flower. I first overlined it with permanent marker, then actually went in and colored it with pencil crayon. And don't forget to color on the rough side of the plastic. When you're coloring, make sure everything is even and that there are no white spaces. Then same as before, I just went in and cut it out. Just a tip when you're cutting things out that you don't want to move your hand too much and you actually want to move the paper that you're cutting on. And of course, you can't forget about the hole for the keychain. And this next charm is a shout out to the Dream SMP Carl Jacobs fans. I wanted to make a keychain of Carl Jacobs' iconic swirl. Little did I know though, disaster was about to strike. This is why you guys don't do this at 2 a.m., which is definitely not the time I'm doing this now. Keep in mind, I mean, obviously, when you make your charms, it will still face both ways, but obviously the nice side is the smooth side. Now, by drawing it like this, this is the rough side, the clear side, the side is basically gonna be flipped. So, I, yeah, that's my bad. Make sure it's mirror image, guys. <laughs> so I ended up having to redraw the image flipped. And after all that mishap, you can see that now if I flip over to the smooth side, the image is flipped correctly. Now for this charm, I decided to try and use water markers, but I realized that after I baked them that they kind of seem to still bleed even after being baked, so I'd still recommend going with pencil crayons, but I just want to try these out and see if they work, which they technically did, but maybe just try not to get water on them. I feel like with the markers as well, it was a bit harder to try and make everything seem more even, and so that's why, again, I would recommend using pencil crayons instead. What was nice about the markers though is that it did seem a bit faster to color and it seemed to give off a glass kind of effect. 
I also wanted to make an Attack on Titan inspired charm, so I went on canvas, got an image of the Scouts logo, so it would be much easier to trace on the plastic instead of having to freehand it. Also quick tip, if you are going to use Canva like I did, please make sure to flip your image, otherwise you're going to make the mistake that I did with the Carl Jacobs one and have the logo the wrong way on the smoother side. For designs like this, you probably want it on a bigger plastic piece, but I just wanted to keep it small since I wanted to use up all the plastic I had left. And again, I just used permanent marker to outline and pencil crayons to color. No, no! And for the next charm, I decided to go with something a little more basic and wanted to do a smiley face charm. Also, please ignore how bad I am at drawing circles. Not even drawing, tracing. Tracing circles. Oh god. Next we move on to baking the actual plastic. So you'll need some aluminum foil on a baking sheet or tray and then you just put on your charms. On the instructions on the back of my sheet it said to put it to 275 and I ended up putting the timer at around 5 minutes but about a minute in the plastic already started to shrink. Look at it go, it was actually really cool to watch. And so the time might vary but you want to wait until the plastic fully shrink and stop shrinking and then you're going to get two heavy books and put some aluminum foil in between them and basically take out your charms as quickly as you can, transfer them to the books. Don't be like me, I took a very long time with these chopsticks. You you want to squish them between the books so that they're not bent. And you want to try to do this as fast as possible, again while the plastic is still hot. And make sure to squish them right between the books nice and hard so that they turn out flat. And just to give you guys a reference on how big the pieces were before and after baking, here's me just showing general measurements of all my charms. And after baking them, I thought the charms turned out pretty well. The colors did turn out a little bit darker than they were originally, but overall I was really happy with them. And I kind of said this earlier, but I really think this DIY is super cool just because you have so much creative freedom over what you want to make. And we're not technically done though, so last but not least, we actually have to put these charms on the keychains. So I have a bunch of these keychains that I got from my local Japanese dollar store, Umomo or Daiso, if you guys know what that is, and basically got a bunch that I just wanted to try and put on my charms. So for these smaller charms, it was definitely a little bit harder to put in the rings, but for the Attack on Titan one, I just looped this on and then put it onto this keychain. The more typical way that it's done though is with some pliers and with a jump ring, so that's what I did with the rest of my charms. It honestly wasn't too hard to kind of bend it open and close it back up. You just need to put a little bit of strength in, but honestly it wasn't too bad. And I actually got the idea to put one of my charms on my Polaroid camera, so I basically just put on a jump ring and then onto the loop that's kind of acting as a handle that comes with the camera. And honestly, I thought it turned out pretty cute and was a nice personalization of my Polaroid. <laughs> 